Hello everyone, welcome to another video in the series of Semantic Kernel and in this video I will explain you how you can add memory to a chatbot. So we will be doing everything in memory, we will not be saving anything on the file system or somewhere else. So in this video it will be just in memory uh, saving. So let's see how we can do this. So the first of all you need to install the required or you need to pull in the required dependencies using NuGet. So here I have pulled microsoft.semantic-kernel and the another one is microsoft.semantic-kernel.plugins.memory. So if you don't know how to pull this, you can just go to your project, right click, manage NuGet packages and from browse you can just search for them and get it installed. So this is one thing which you need to do. Then the next thing is uh, there are certain warnings uh, which you may see while doing this because this thing is still in experimental mode. So that's the reason I have just uh, defined these above so that it will be ignored and it will not give you error. So let's start uh, creating the kernel like this is the first step which we usually do. So I would say kernel equal to and here again you can use Azure OpenAI or OpenAI whatever you want so whichever the option you are taking make sure that you are grabbing all the required keys and points whatever we need in my case I have just saved it here uh, and the line number seven you can see rather than keeping it somewhere else but you can keep it wherever you want so now I'm saying kernel dot create builder and then I need to assign or call the LLM which we want to use so I'm going with Azure so I would say Azure add Azure open AI chat completion and inside this we need to pass in few parameters like deployment name endpoint and the API key so let's get started by passing the deployment name first then we need endpoint so endpoint would be my Azure endpoint and at last we will say API key which is API key so once this is done uh, let me put a colon here okay so once this is done we can simply call build so if you want you can do all these steps in like in separate separate lines I'm just doing it in one shot so if you're planning for separate line what you can do is you can just put a, here semicolon then use this object and then just keep constructing this chain but I'm just doing it in a single chain now next thing is we need to define some execution settings like what all parameters you want to pass like temperature max length of your prompt and what all so those all things you can define here under execution settings so here we will say open AI a new open AI prompt execution settings and under this you can define whatever you want whether it's your temperature top K so I will just go with the bare minimum I'm expecting my response in just 200 max token so I'm just mentioning it here now let's say you you want to use open AI rather than Azure open AI so you can use the respective class so in that case you have a class name like add open AI chat completion so this is a class which you can use it but let's go ahead with the Azure OpenAI because I have already grabbed my keys for that so now we have our kernel ready we have our execution settings ready next thing is we need to define the prompt so for defining the prompt uh, what I'm saying is chatbot can have a conversation on any topic and then I'm providing the history and then I'm providing the user input so history is nothing but it is like the collection of what user is saying and what what is responding so this is the combination which we are going to save as a history so next thing is once we have this prompt defined so make sure that you have this correctly defined wherein you are having both these parameters one for user input and another one for maintaining the history definitely you can change these variable names and keep it as per your need then once we have the prompt ready what we need to do is we need to uh, call the semantic function so for that we'll create a variables variable name chat function which will use kernel dot create function from prompt so this is how we used to create so I will provide you prompt and then I will specify my execution settings as well 
once this is done let's define some empty thing or the default history I would say and here we can say string dot empty and then we also need to associate this history as a kernel argument then only it will uh, consider this as a part of the kernel so I would say arguments equal to new kernel argument and here we will pass our, we will associate our history object here and it has to be in the code let me correct it okay and here I will just assign this history okay so this is what we need to do and the next thing is if you want to just do one conversation then history doesn't make any sense so for maintaining the history you should have a multiple to and fro conversation so it means that you may have a long conversation in that case we can just write a function or we can just write a loop which will go infinitely until unless we will write some stop sequence or some keyword where we want this to stop so to make this thing because if we are writing for every statement there would be multiple lines of the same type so rather than doing that we will just construct a func and then we'll call that particular func wherever we want to invoke this conversation so let's define that it is going to take string and we'll be running tasks because this would be an asynchronous call so we'll say chat with me inside this I will simply pass in input so I'm doing it in this way but if you want you can also create a simple plain function that a tra traditional way I mean and now uh, we are going to associate this user input with our kernel argument so here I would say user input you can name any variable which you want to associate with the kernel but make sure to assign the same variable which you are getting as an input from here so I would say input then we need to invoke the function so for that I would say where response where response equal to await chat function dot invoke async and in this we need to pass kernel and the arguments okay next thing is we need to combine the user uh, input and the LLM's response so for that we need to construct a string so I would call it as a result then let's use dollar sign to concatenate the string and then I would say user so this is the statement made by the user uh, so it would be input here and then we need to write the same thing for the response so this is the response let's put slash n and we are good to go so this is the function and next thing we need to add here is to update the history variable so for updating the history what we will be doing is we will just say history plus equal to the new result which we just received which we just constructed over here so that the older data and the new data which we are constructing uh, will be together now and if we want we can just I'm sorry we can just print the result for the user so console dot write line and the result we don't want to show the entire history to the user so we will just be displaying the result well so we are done with almost everything the only thing which is remaining is to take uh, input from the user and generate the response so like I said we can do it in any way I'm going with the while loop here and we'll say console.write line will ask user to provide some input here and 
I'm creating a new variable user input where we will be reading users input and now we are good to call our function which we just created about chat with me and it is going to take user input as a parameter. Okay, I believe we are done. The one thing which we need now it is infinite loop. So definitely we need some stop condition or the terminal termination condition. So we'll say if user input equal equal exit, then just come out. Okay, let's try this out. Let's run it and see how it does. Can you tell me some free time activities? Okay. Tell me more about the second one. I'm not sure what you are referring to. So according to me, it should come up with the response, but it is not. Let's have a look at the code. Maybe we missed something. So this is the place where we are constructing the history object. We are assigning it. Then we are taking user arguments, user argument, then we are invoking. So we forgot to assign or update the history back in the arguments. So. Uh, I believe that is the reason why it is not able to remember. History. So this was the line which we were supposed to enter. So let's run it again and see if it can answer our questions. Okay. Can you suggest me some free time Activities. Just suggest me on your interest. So these are the things which it is suggesting. Now let me ask it like. Uh, the second activity you are uh, you just suggested the second activity I suggested was watching movie or TV shows okay so if you will read the description here it is saying I enjoy including reading books watching movies so that is the reason it is so it means that it is able to understand what was our previous question and was able to answer accordingly so let me ask the final question. Did you remember oops, what was my very first question? Yeah, so indeed it got the correct one and say it is saying your very first question was about suggestions for free time activities. So you can see that how easily it is able to remember everything whatever we are speaking about and here the constraint is completely depend on the box on which you are running this so if you have very low memory definitely you can't execute till long but again it's a very good option if you just want to restrict it to one session and then just uh, and you're okay with the losing the chat so i hope you got an idea how to maintain the basic history with keeping everything in the memory do let me know in comments what do you think about it and where all uh, or which all scenarios you can utilize this. Thanks for watching.